Okay, this might be the fastest video I've ever done. This is actually handheld camera mode, so let's go. Check it out. APC-40, right? This thing rocks. Um, when used in conjunction with the push, amazing. Now, how most people have this set up is that when I press 2 over here, right, uh, I, it gets reflected on the push. And when I press 3 on the push, as we look at the APC, it gets reflected, so on and so forth, right? So over here, when I press 2, for instance, these knobs right here are going to reflect any kind of effects that I have on channel 2 right here. Now, I actually don't have any, so they're not showing us anything. Um, this is generally how the APC functions when you have it connected with Ableton. When you have it connected with other programs, it works differently, where I can have like this pushed, right? And you see something's on this channel, but I don't want to look at what's on this channel. I don't want to look at what's on this channel every time I click it and lose what I have up here. I'd like to move around down here separately from how I move around up here. Very important to me. So there's actually a thing that you can do. You can send a sysx message from, so how this, how this setup works, check it out. I've got my, my push, my APC, my Nord Lead 4, my Fireface 400, my computer, this is a little Intel NUC right here, it's a little four inch by four inch little box right here, and my iPad, and that's my entire setup. So the iPad connects to the NUC, the, the push and the APC connect to the NUC, the Nord connects to the Fireface, and then my, my microphone input connects to the Fireface, and then I have everything going out of my Fireface to my Motu over here, and that connects to Ableton on my other computer. So this has nothing to do with this outside of the recording that comes out of my Fireface. So how I like to use the APC-40 is a little bit different. Check it out. Because um, right now, the APC-40, as Ableton looks at it, you only really have eight user-defined knobs. When you click user here, now these knobs are programmable by you. Everything else is locked to what you're looking at. You can't really change it. Um, so you can work with that as best you can, but I didn't like that. I hate the idea of it. In the APC Mark 1, you can click each of these and have a different set of knobs here while never changing, because right now when I, when I click up here, I change the channels on the push. And if I'm playing something, I, I, I don't want to change the channels. I want to change what effects I'm looking at up here independently from everything else. So there's actually something that you can do. Uh, check it out. I have this iPad over here as the monitor for this computer, uh, my performance computer, not this computer, this is different. Uh, so I have, I have Ableton over here, and this is what's connected to this push and this APC. So what's actually happening is you can, you can look into this guy over here, right? I have, and you don't have to use this, but this is Touch OSC. And when you're playing with Touch OSC, uh, you can program it to do anything that you like. So I'm going to have another YouTube video showing us how I program Touch OSC and how it works because I've got a whole bunch of loopers, a whole bunch of effects and stuff like that. So I'll show you how I set all that up because it's pretty cool. But the number one thing that is that that I find it most useful for is I can send this button. It's, it's called APC. I, it doesn't come with it or anything. I, I, I built it like that. And it, it says APC. I wrote it like that. I made that button. I put it there, etc. Uh, it's 100% custom. Um, but when I click this, and it's nothing to, it has nothing to do with Touch OSC. It can be on anything. It could be any kind of MIDI, anything. When I touch this, it then sends a note over here to Bohm's MIDI translator. Now, this is super important. Um, you see, and I'll, I'll give you this information of, of what the actual sysx, sysx message is that I send, but up top here, let's see if I can focus in hardly. Uh, yeah, you see the Moire coming in. Um, so it's what's happening, I called this function the APC setup. So when it receives a note on, on channel 15 with, you know, note number 60 something, um, 
it it takes that MIDI note once I press it and Bohm's changes it to something else. It says, oh, MIDI note received, that's the trigger for Bohm's to send a sysx message to the APC. Now what that does is it, it reconfigures the APC to operate under a different firmware than it usually does. So check it out. When I press the, the touch OSC button that I was talking about, um, sorry, I'm like turning this way and that way in my bed. Uh, when I when when I press the APC button, boink. It uh, oh, I wish I was looking at the the APC when I did it. You see all of these turned on, and all of these reset. And this reset to number one. It was on like number three or something earlier. So everything reset. Uh, and now, you see how this is on. Uh, this is looking at eight. This is looking at one. So when I press two over here, and I'm about to press it, you see nothing changes on the push. I can change this as many times as I like, and nothing changes on the push. I'm still looking at number eight. And now each one of these is its own, it's 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 its own uh, two by four, so eight individual knobs here that are assignable to anything I like. So when I press this one, or this one, or this one, it's a different set of knobs. Now, every time that I initialize, I need to reset it, so I, I've memorized where I put all of them. These are my default settings. I know on two, I have it looking like that. Three, I have it like that. Four, I have it like that. Five, I have it like that. Six, I have it like that. Seven is nothing right now, and eight, I have it like that. And then on the user settings, I have it like this. And then these four. And I can I can show you at another time what I have all this mapped to, because I find it very useful. I've done a lot of troubleshooting on like what's most applicable. And then I do one of these. I am looking at this. So now this is how this is how I have it set up to play. So that now when I click this guy, I can play with some master effects. When I click this guy, I can play with my vocal effects. And each one of these are a different effect. You know, this is um, high pass, low pass, panning. Then on the rest of them, they look pretty much the same. High pass, low pass. Then here's some like reverb and delay effects, etc. And this is my side chain parameters for different chains in my, in my actual um, uh, signal path. So yeah, that's pretty much what I have going on. If you look in the description, you can see what sysx message I send. Um, other than that, keep an eye out for a Bohm's video that I have coming out soon. I've yet to record a single second of it, but I will promise where I show you uh, how, I, how I use Bohm's MIDI, Bohm's MIDI editor. Um, and I have Bohm's because I have all these different program changes here so where I press one thing and and it 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 swallows that message it says okay trigger received and then it it does a whole bunch of other stuff on top of it so I send it one note and then it it creates like a cascade of effects that that flow into Ableton by pressing that one note and by that I mostly mean my my loopers over here so when I when I click record looper one over here, it records into here and it stops all of these. So if any of these are playing, it sends a stop button to all of these and a, and a record button to this one. And if I press record over here, it stops all of these and it records into that one, etc. I have a bunch of like modular effects over here on this guy. But that's pretty much the idea. Uh, so you can find the sysx message in the description. If you have any questions, please ask me. I know this is a lot to handle real fast, but I thought that this was a good thing to share with people because there's a way that you can get a lot more out of your APC, and I highly recommend checking it out because in instead of having uh, just a few knobs that are user programmable, these top eight, you can instead have, let's see, um, nine times eight, so that's what, like, let's see, uh, 64, 72? You can have 72, uh, 72 user-defined knobs to play with. 
and I, I reprogrammed all of my faders, so they're not volume faders anymore, they're dry wets of different effects. The same with my crossfade, it does something else, it's a, it's a dry wet switch actually, so it's either zero or a hundred, and it switches at the halfway mark. Um, and I've got a bunch of effects up here, these ones control like MIDI effects, this controls drum effects, and yeah, so I have loads and loads of user programmed um, MIDI controls that I would not have otherwise. And I can do all of that while the push stays completely and utterly unaffected by anything that happens up here. The push remains completely stable. I can be playing melodies on one instrument and do a bunch of stuff with my other hand and the push is not affected. So really, really cool. Uh, check it out and yeah, peace.